So if there's anything I've learned while making this kind of content is that a lot of the times people will judge the content creator thinking that where they're coming from, from the perspective that they're making the content, they think that person is either hurt or bitter. And you know, for a large part, a majority of some of the content creators within this space probably do come off that way. The title of this video says why men should no longer focus on women. But honestly speaking, I don't even want this message to be solely focused on women. Like whatever you hear in this video, I want you to extrapolate it and just apply it to something else, something else that might be taking up your time. One of my biggest vices growing up was women. And the funny thing is, I didn't even notice this until my adulthood. Every second, every minute of my day felt like it was focused on trying to attract women, which for the most part didn't always work. You know, like growing up in grade school, I was this chubby little kid who was just, you know, a book nerd to say the least, who was into science and stuff like that but women were always on my mind. And one thing I've learned is that as I've gotten older, you have to make a decision in your life. Like what is your focus as a man going to be? Creating things that can help other people or be of service to other people or constantly chase women. And this is the basis of my message. Throughout my own experience with this, I sacrificed my own goals just for women. And from a larger perspective, I sacrificed my own goals for my friends and family. So the year was 2017, 2018. I was working at a gym at the time in New York, which shall remain nameless. And I was I was doing pretty good there. I was making the gym about $90,000 a year. And I was taking about 60% of that, you do the math. But during that age, you know, that was solid money to me. So I had absolutely no complaints whatsoever. I had a lot of clients. I had a, a very large clientele base. And more importantly, the funds that I was making from my personal on training, I was using to fund my music career. Still make music, uh, I haven't put out anything new lately, but that's besides the point. I would work 10 to 12 hour days at the gym. And then after that, I would come home, I would dedicate myself to writing at least one song every day. I would have these ideas or these notes in my head that I would write while I was at work. And then at night, I'd put the music together. I would then go to the studio on the weekends where I would record all my music, sometimes like three, four, five tracks. And obviously those would just be rough drafts. The next week I'd work on them again, come back, repeat the process X, Y, and Z. So over time and eventually after being consistent and you know, making decently good music, um, I got signed to a label called Human Resources. The people that I met within that network knew a couple of other people, a couple of major artists that were performing within my area. I ended up linking up with Wu-Tang Clan's tour manager and after convincing him over a couple of weeks and months, to allow me to open up for them, I finally had the opportunity to open up for Meth and Redman at Starland Ballroom back in like 2018, which was incredible for me. It was such a crazy experience. I performed in front of about 200 people, which to me as an indie artist at that time was kind of incredible. So you're probably wondering where women and distractions come into play into this story, and I'll let you know now. It was the night of the performance. It was me, my then girlfriend at the time, and my friends that were all going. And you know, we pulled up in our separate cars. I was with my girlfriend and then my friends were driving in one car. They're all carpooling. So on the way to the show, she starts acting erratic. She's a little standoffish, this, then, the third. And while I'm driving there, you know, I'm asking her what's going on. Like, why does she feel the way she feels? This, that, and the third. You know, the sh guys try to do to make relationships cohesive. It wasn't until after the show that her insecurities really started flaring up. And admittedly, this is my fault because what happened afterwards, I was in complete control of. So after my performance, I ended up speaking to Wu-Tang's tour manager again. And he was mentioning all the different dates and states that they'd be stopping on, which to me sounded like they wanted me to continue on the tour with them because uh, admittedly, listen, leave your thoughts in the comments below. But if you've seen the video that I just played, admittedly, I think I did a pretty good job. And I think the crowd also thought that. So there was definitely the potential for me to carry on and continue opening for them in other states. And who knows what could have happened, but where was my focus? I was thinking about the conversation I was having with my girl and I wanted to make shit right. I wanted to make sure everything was okay. So we didn't have any more bumps in the road. Much to your disappointment and mine, I ended up turning down the next opportunity to open for Meth and Redman. Ironically enough, literally a couple months later, we ended up breaking up anyway. And then from that point on, I haven't made a single since. And it's been almost five years now. So using myself as an example, what am I trying to say here? Time is ultimately the most finite and most viable resource that you have to your disposal. And when I think about the time I spent trying to make a relationship go right with someone who is not even with me now, it was a complete waste of my time. And ironically, but also unfortunately enough, a lot of us men are finding out that modern relationships now 
are just that. Guys, time is a very finite resource. And when I think about all my other accomplishments and everything else that I've wanted to do in my life, ironically enough, every time I've accomplished them, I was single. You really can only just pick one. It's either you pick your goals or you pick a relationship. Either way, you're going to lose one of them in the process. And if you're a guy who is on his mission, on his journey, doing what he has to do, and you run into a woman and you know she meets you at a certain stage where you're progressing, you're doing what you have to do, and then at some point she starts asking for more of your time, you need to do yourself a favor and let her go. And that's simply because at the end of the day, she's going to try and siphon more time from you. Think about it. If you go, this is just an example. Let's say you work five days a week, right? Like you you own your own business and you can create your schedule. Let's say you work five days a week and based off that five days a week, you make X amount of money, but you really like this girl, you wanna see her more often, so you try and finesse your schedule. You know, maybe you'll work half of a day, so you're working four and a half days, but you're still making the same amount of money, so there's no real effect. You're not gonna feel the effects of shortening out your time for work right now, but she starts asking for more time. Now you're working four days, now you're working three and a half days, so on and so forth. Next thing you know, the business starts losing money because you're putting more time into your relationship with her than your relationship with the business. And ultimately, you have to ask yourself, what's more important? Either becoming the man you're supposed to be or being complacent with a woman who likes you for the half value that you are now, or I guess liking you for you, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I personally don't think any woman can like you for you. Regardless of how hard you try and how hard you try to make your character shine through, I think the qualities of who you are, character aside, like your skills, traits, and things of that nature, ultimately define if this woman wants to stick with you for the long haul. But as far as I'm concerned, so long as I or so long as you have a goal right now, women should not be on the priority list at all. They should be the very last thing at the very bottom of that list. If anything, it should be like a weekend endeavor. You know, like, hey, I'm going out to the bar tonight. Maybe I'll have a conversation with someone interesting. We'll see what happens. So the moral of this story, gentlemen, is don't sacrifice your dreams and your goals for women. A woman wanting to be in your life is an extreme variable that you can't control. We can't control a woman. If she doesn't want to stick around, she's not going to stick around. So there's no point in trying to force people to stay in your life. We know that the woman is likely to change her mind at any moment in time, but you know what's going to stick by you? Your goals, your aspirations, your dreams, and the things you want to achieve. Why? Because those things are innately in you. And so long as you're focused and you really want to achieve them, you will get there. But let me hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have you ever sacrificed your dreams for a woman or have gotten a woman pregnant and then had to stop pursuing something? Let me hear your story down in the comments below. Once again, this was your boy Serge. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out another one of these videos and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.